What's up cousins, Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats and this is chapter nine of the port john build. And in this video, we're gonna cover everything epoxy bottom coat. I'm gonna cover what it is and why I'm actually using it on the bottom of my John boat. I'm gonna show you guys the prep process. I'm gonna also show you how I apply it to the bottom of the boat step by step. I'm gonna have some tips and tricks along the way. I'm gonna go over the product that I prefer to use as well as all the tools and materials needed to do the job. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you guys a couple things that I would do different on a second go round to make sure that you nail it on the first go round. So stick around to the end of the video. This job came out phenomenal. Epoxy bottom coat, let's get it. We are on the road to 50K here on the channel. So if you like John Boat content and what I do in these videos, consider hitting that subscribe button and I would greatly appreciate the support. Hey guys, I'm excited to announce that Six Sense Fishing just released their panfish and crappie line. Tinsel jigs, hair jigs, underspins, everything you need to catch some slabs available in awesome colors and the quality and selection that Six Sense has become known for. Put some in the boat, go to sixcentsfishing.com and use the code BRIGADE to save you 10% off your entire order. And guys, it really helps support the channel. So go check them out and let's get on with the video. The project boat is a 12 foot long, 32 inch wide aluminum John boat. This is a personal project of mine that I have dubbed the Porta John because it is a trailerless portable John boat concept. If you're new here to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing so you can stay up to date on this project as well as many other boat projects that I have going on. Also, I have a full playlist dedicated to this boat build documenting its step-by-step -step and tutorial videos leading up until this point, so feel free to check those out. Without further ado, let's get into some bottom coat. We'll kick this thing off by answering the biggest question that I get, why use bottom coat? The answer lies in the four P's of bottom coat, which are protection, performance, and to prevent water penetration. And yes, I just made those up, but they're still true. The epoxy bottom coat I'm gonna use in this video adds a layer of flexible protection to your boat. You could bump rocks, logs, banks, concrete, run aground, doesn't matter, this bottom coat helps protect. And from a performance standpoint, bottom coat allows you to slide the boat on and off the trailer much easier as there is less friction and resistance, or in my case, in and out of the truck bed. Now, there is a debate if bottom coat makes your boat faster in the water. Some say yes, some say no. I actually do some testing for myself at the end of this video. Lastly, and my biggest reason for using epoxy bottom coat on this project is to prevent water penetration. My boat is the definition of a leaky tin can, and in my opinion, bottom coat is the best and most professional solution to seal up a riveted hull in a one and done application. And we'll cover exactly what I'm using in a bit as well as the application process, but first things first, testing the boat for leaks. I leveled out the boat and put a few inches of water in it, ensuring that water covered the entire bottom, including all the rib rivets. Leaks will show, and from there, I made a note of where the leaks came from as areas to address later. The product I'm using is Fasco Super Slick. It's a two-part epoxy bottom coat. The kit comes with a part A and a part B. You could buy pigment to change the color, and it's available in a lot of colors. I went with black. Finally, time to do some bottom coat on the Top Gun port john It's been a long time coming. Guys, I'm using this as a two birds with one stone type of deal. Um, number one, if you can't tell by looking at this boat, it has been to Hades and back, and previous ownership has left it in ruins and covered in, I believe this is silicone. This is going to help seal around all of these rivets and basically do a whole lot better job than whatever this stuff is that's been smeared on here. If you can't tell by the name, super slick, baby. It's going to make the bottom of this thing super slick. Now, why is that important for me? Well, if you've never seen this boat before, it is a portable jumbo. It slides in and out of the bed of my truck. Having a slick bottom will help it slide in and slide out. And I fish a lot of electric only reservoirs where it's like NASCAR, guys. Every 0.1 mile per hour you can gain out on those electric waters um, helps you that much more. This bottom coat I think is gonna help this thing on electric waters. You've got part A, part B, you mix them together. You have a chemical reaction. And then once that reaction starts, you have a set working time to get it on the bottom of the boat. Now this is a pigment additive that you mix in at a specific ratio depending on how much product you're using. All right, cousins, this is out of Fasco's book. It's field tested on thousands of airboats in Florida since 1961. So something good has come out of Florida. 
Uh, sorry, Gator fans. And here's the aluminum galvanized. Of course, my boat is aluminum. Increases speed, protection from rocks and debris. It contains Teflon, which we all know if it doesn't have Teflon, it ain't worth having. It was time to prep the bottom. For this, I use a four and a half inch angle grinder equipped with a crimped wire brush wheel. This is my typical aluminum hole prep setup because it cleans the aluminum well without being too aggressive. On this hole, I ended up having to switch to a knotted wire wheel. Let me explain why. I got started and I was working the middle and things were working great. Got to the outside and this bad boy started gumming up. So I swapped to the knotted wire wheel. Let me show you why that wheel was gumming up on me. When my buddy Chris and I from ATF Hydrographics painted this boat in a paint booth, it was on a stand. It was painted uh, black, gray, and then matte clear coat to achieve this finish. And we did not tape off the bottom. Now, I didn't realize so much overspray was on the bottom. It seems to just be from this rib out. But if you look right here, you could really, really see it. This is where we taped off the painted shark's teeth. And you can see the tape lines between before paint and after paint. So all this overspray, when I hit it with this uh, crimped wire wheel, it is just gumming it up. So the knotted wire wheel seems to be the ticket. But I did want to show you, again, this is the crimped wire wheel finish. And then the knotted wire wheel produces this finish. It scratches, removes more material, more aggressive. So because of that, I typically use a crimp wire wheel. And then if I need to upgrade, then I do. And I did. So just want to include it in case you get to grind in the bottom of your boat and realize that you may need a different wire wheel depending on the scenario of your project. From there, I continued grinding on the bottom of the boat. Between the crimp wire brush wheel and the knotted wire wheel, I was able to complete the project. I stripped all the old silicone off the rivets and was very careful around the edges as not to damage the exterior paint. I went back with my Milwaukee N12 rotary tool and wheel to get in tight nooks and crannies and dents and dings to clean the aluminum up. All right, got the whole bottom all grinded and it is in its 10 man stage, as I like to say. The last thing I need to address is my couple of leaky rivets from when I water tested it. Now this one, I'm actually gonna leave it. I'm gonna let it ride. I'm confident the bottom coat's gonna seal up around it nicely. This other one was really bad, so I just completely grinded off that rivet altogether. I'm gonna drill a new hole and put a new closed rivet in place. I got my M12 Milwaukee rivet gun, and this is a rivet. I get these at Tiny Boat Nation. You'll see, it's solid on the inside. It's a closed rivet. All right, so let me show you kind of how this works. <sighs> So what'll happen is when I punch this rivet through the hole, the inside is completely solid. Therefore, water can't get into the boat and then the bottom coat will fill that hole. All right, there it is, problem solved. New rivet is installed. Again, closed end rivet. Where that hole is, where that pin came out, it's gonna get covered in bottom coat and seal up nicely. Next up, I'm gonna take some denatured alcohol, put on some shop rags and just wipe down the entire bottom surface that I just uh, prepped. Basically, this will help remove any of this funk and some of these shavings, any residual stuff left over from the prep process, and then also get off any chemicals or surface contaminants and ensure that that bottom coat sticks really well. And there it is, all cleaned up. Of course, these are all surface contaminants that will prevent the bottom coat from sticking properly. So with it all cleaned up, time to tape it off. All taped up and I went ahead and covered the front area of the boat in paper. I feel that this is gonna be the area that I might get some drips on the sides. I didn't bother. So I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit on the sides, but I will show you, I'm keeping this tape line a little bit down off that hard edge just to give me a nice clean line. But because of that, I'm not able to get in there with the grinder. So I'm just taking a red scotch pad and I'm just gonna go in here and scuff it like so, real good. And then I'm gonna hit this entire bottom one last time and clean it in denatured alcohol. So let's go over the epoxy. It's two part guys, you got part one and part two. I've got two kits. So this is one quart. This is one quart, that makes half a gallon. This is the pigment. Now there's four ounces of this. They recommend to use one ounce per quart. With the pigment, you need to add it to part two. I'm gonna mix each one individually inside of its container. Then I'll take both of these and I'm gonna pour them 
and this guy. Then I'm gonna add the pigment, half of this, two ounces, into there, and then mix all of that up. And then we will take part one, and I will repeat the process. I'll mix each of these inside this container, and then I'll pour them both in to this with part two. And at that point, a chemical reaction starts to take place once you mix it up real good. And you gotta remember this is a function over fashion product. Uh, you have limited working time. Once it's mixed up, you gotta move and get it on there before it sets up. I'm gonna do my best to achieve a nice looking product, but I can't guarantee perfection. Let's go ahead and mix it up. I decided to mix both quart kits together to make one half gallon batch. Looking back, I should have just mixed one kit, but more on that in a minute. I take part two, mix them together, and then I add the black tint. I then take part one and mix that separately before adding it to part two that was previously mixed with the tint, mixing everything. Then I start the application process. As you can see, I'm just pouring the epoxy out and just spreading it around and rolling it out as evenly as possible. This is the first time that I've done this coating. And while this application method worked, it is not how I would do it again. There's a few things I change and actually do change because unfortunately I would end up having to do a second bottom coat. Let's discuss. I'm going to cut the video right there because I wanted to take a quick pause and highlight some things that I'm doing at this moment that I would definitely do different on a second go round. Number one is the amount of product that I'm mixing. You just watched me mix two quart kits, which makes half a gallon, which is 60 square foot of coverage when all I needed for my 1232 was 36 square foot of coverage. I mixed too much product. I thought the more the merrier and I would pour it on the bottom, spread it out and it would be all good. Well, it wasn't. The more product you mix together, the faster that chemical reaction, the hotter it gets, the less pot time or workable time you have. So I would definitely only mix one quart kit on a boat my size and try to get that evenly on the bottom. And then if a second coat or more product was needed, then mix a second kit. And that leads me into number two. I would not mix the product in a jug like I did, pour it out, and then run around like a chicken with his head cut off, trying to spread it out evenly and hope for the best. On my second go round, I actually mix the product, put it in a paint roller tray, and then apply it from there. Number three, I use a foam zippy roller. To me, a foam cabinet roller leaves a nice smooth finish with painted projects. Well, guess what? Epoxy is not paint. It does not work the same. I found that out the hard way. Didn't want to roll. It grabbed the product. Towards the end, I was kind of squeegeeing the product around. At the very end, it started chunking and breaking off and getting stuck in the epoxy. So I definitely would use a nap roller. And again, you're going to see me in a minute do the second coat. And that's what I'm using in that portion. And lastly, you're watching me do this outside in the shade, which is fine if you have no other option, but I did have a better option. I could have done it in my garage. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to cover my floors. I didn't want to get epoxy on the concrete and I was just being lazy. So I said, I'll do it outside in the shade. No worries. But what I did not think about was this was done in October. It was warm during the day and it cooled off a lot at night. The product did not cure 100% by nightfall and we got a lot of moisture and dew in the air that night as the temps dropped. It got in that epoxy bottom coat, made it cloudy, even made it run down the edges of the boat in some spots. Now the next day it eventually cured after the sun came out, but the damage was done. And at that point I was gonna scrap this video altogether as I contemplated what my next move was gonna be. And now we're gonna get into what I did next. After sulking and debating for a while, you can see what I did here. I let the first coat fully cure and then I sanded it all smooth. And again, I was going to scrap this video all together after the first coat got moisture in it, so I didn't get any footage. I did take these pictures which shows how the moisture caused the epoxy to kind of curl up and even thin out and run in some spots. Definitely not what it looked like after I applied that first coat. Now, I could have left it and a lot of people probably would have because at the end of the day, it's bottom coat and it worked, but I know that the finish wasn't proper. I wasn't expecting perfection on this project, but I also knew I could do better and a mistake had occurred that I decided that I wanted to fix. So I sanded it. A big thank you to Fasco for shipping me out more product as well as giving me some advice after the moisture got in that first coat. Everyone at Fasco was super nice and helpful and I couldn't recommend them enough. Now that I was back at ground zero with a freshly sanded surface, the second coat is actually how you should apply this epoxy from the start. So this time around, I mixed only one quart kit. I also used a different roller. I used a 3 8 nap roller that I got from Sherwin-Williams. I also used a roller tray for the epoxy instead of pouring it directly onto the boat. And lastly, 
I did this second coat in my garage this time, eliminating the sun, wind, or any moisture from affecting the project. And I have to admit, this was a dream. It went so easy and smooth. It was so workable. Night and day difference from my first coat. This is how it should be applied. And don't forget to take your tape off before the epoxy cures for a clean tape line. All right, guys, here she is, all done, all cured. Now, you can get back out on the water after you do the bottom coat pretty quick, within a few days. But for me, I actually did this bottom coat, and I moved on to other projects, and this boat has been sitting in my garage for a few months. But I finally got some stuff off my plate, and I'm anxious to get this thing out on the water today and test it out. Two main goals today for this test are to verify that this boat does not leak any longer because it did leak around some problematic rivets, but I'm pretty sure those sealed up all nicely. And then also is to get a top speed run. And one of the cool things I've done with this project is I've documented the top speed runs from bone stock to after pods to now with the bottom coat and paint. And then we're going to do it again when the boat is fully built and see how the top speed changes over time as the boat is modified. One last look at this epoxy bottom coat before we flip this boat and load it in the truck and get to the lake. I work one area and I, I hit it one roll, I get it consistent, and then I move on. The more you go over it and the more you work it, especially as it begins to cure, the worse the texture effect will get. This is a total function over fashion modification. Find a routine, find a pattern, and get it consistent, and then just walk away. And it will self-level to a degree. And I feel that this bottom coat came out real consistent throughout, and I'm really happy with it. I'll show you guys how slick this is. I got one of these six inch traces. And I don't think you would do that on a raw aluminum bottom. Oh, thanks, Jack. <laughs> Little final shot in the sunlight. Got the garage door open. And then you could really see how thick this stuff built up around some of these rivets. I mean, that one is dang near covered up completely. Some of these are, that. there's actually a rivet under there. So I think this stuff's really going to do its job as far as sealing up the leaks. And then how I had taped it off around the side, you could see I got a nice crisp edge. And I know this hole is dented and dinged and warped in some spots. But remember, guys, this boat was a $125 buy on Facebook. And we are going to turn it to an absolute machine. And it's starting to take shape. I wanted to mention one other thing on this top speed test. And that's that the data will be misrepresented. The last top speed test I did was directly after I installed the float pods. Since that test, I framed the side rails, the cockpit floor system, and some of the vertical walls. I'm guessing 40 pounds in weight was added, and this had to be done before paint and bottom coat because the framing attaches through the hull. With that said, weight has been added, and this speed test is not a true before and after bottom coat test. I just wanted to mention that before we get out on the water. All right, guys, made it to my local electric only reservoir. We're out on the water. I got my six horsepower e-propulsion electric outboard rigged on the back of this thing. Time to do a top speed run. And of course, we're gonna check to make sure that this bottom coat holds up and there's no leaks in the boat. All right, guys, top speed was 9.5 miles per hour. Last go round after the pods were added, it was 10.1. So we actually lost 0.6 mile per hour. 
but it's kind of skewed data because if you go back to the last video, I actually started the floor system in this boat. We added some hat channels, some sheet aluminum, some foam, and some framing because I had to get some of the framing done before the boat actually got painted. And we couldn't do bottom coat until the boat was painted first. So it is what it is. 0.6 miles per hour loss, 9.5 top speed. And maybe in the future, I can redo this test and do a top speed before and directly after bottom coat with no other alterations. But again, it's kind of the nature of the beast and how you have to take the steps within the project to build out these boats. Now, as far as the condition of the hole and if the bottom coat cured those leaky rivets, it definitely did. I had some leaky rivets up front, actually right around where that battery's sitting. As you can see, everything is bone dry. There's no water coming through. You can see where I replaced the rivets actually. And uh, so everything's good. Those were the ones that were giving me an issue. I do have some water in the back of the boat, guys, but I've been keeping a really good eye on it. And it's definitely just coming from this plug. So I'm gonna have to figure that out and get a better plug. Top speed recap to this point, bone stock original top speed was 11.6 miles per hour. Directly after the side mount float pods, it went to 10.1 miles per hour. And now after some of the framing and floor, exterior paint and bottom coat, the new top speed is 9.5 miles per hour, which is a 5.94% speed loss from the last time I tested it. Not bad though, and honestly, some chop, some wind, or weight distribution could change things that much. Overall, I'm really happy with how the bottom coat turned out. I'm excited about this boat, and I look forward to bringing you guys more content on this project. Final notes and thoughts. Number one, the Fasco Super Slick application process is actually really easy once you do it the right way, guys. Mix your kit up, have your bottom prepped, Put your kit in a paint roller tray with your nap roller and just spread it on. Try to do it inside of a garage or a covered area if possible. Stay out of direct sunlight away from wind and obviously moisture and you should be golden. Do one coat once it tacks over. If a second coat is needed, then do a second coat within a few hours of that first coat and it's all good, baby. Number two, I didn't really touch on working temperatures, but when I did this, it was around 70 degrees. The hotter it gets, the faster that stuff is gonna cure. The cooler it is, obviously, the slower it's gonna cure. And I've been told that 55 degrees and under, that it basically stops the curing process. So definitely don't do it in cold weather. And lastly, there's other bottom coat products out on the market, but I went with the Fasco product specifically because I'd heard really good things about it. And I knew that the application process was essentially a one and done, meaning that you could get a coat or two on and walk away. And once it cured, you're back out on the water. Super simple process. So that's why I went with a Fasco. But perhaps in the future, we could cover some of those other products. And with that said, that's it, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Hopefully you were able to take something away from this video. I've got more to come on this boat. Eventually, the next thing we're going to be doing is interior framing on the port john in the meantime, I've got other projects, customer projects, builds that I'm going to be doing videos on. So stick around for those videos. Thanks again, and we'll catch you on the next one.